Hello everyone, I am Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of GeneForge 2! We've managed to get through the entire tutorial area at long last, refreshed ourselves on some bits of information here and there, and... well, we know that something stinks in Dry Peak. Even though it's fully... even though people are still living there, everything outside makes it seem like it's abandoned. I think it's time we find out why. Time to enter Dry Peak. At last, one of the residents of Dry Peak has come to greet you. He is a warrior, a captain by the look of him. He looks tired, and his armor is old, worn, and dusty. He does not look happy to see you. Welcome, travelers, he begins. I am Captain Takena. I am sorry that our welcome to you was not more timely, but wanderers in these parts have not been friendly lately. Can I ask you to identify yourselves? The response only infuriates Shanti further. You receive an envoy from the Shapers, and only a mere captain is sent to greet us. This is an insult! Take me to Zachary immediately. I will only speak my business with him. Takena looks very nervous. He clearly doesn't want to take you anywhere, let alone to his leader. I am sorry, friend agent. I see you have traveled far. However, I can't let you proceed without evidence that you have business here. Shanti is quiet. She seems to be sizing up the situation, or getting her rage under control. One of the two. <clears throat> uh, our orders are to be delivered to Zachary personally, and he will not appreciate us being delayed. Shanti and Takena turn to you, surprised. They both forgot that you were there. Normally, the command of an apprentice carries very little weight. However, your words strike home. Takena looks doubtful. Shanti presses the advantage. Our orders are to be given to Zachary directly, and it will not go well for anyone if our time is wasted further. Alright, I will take it to Zachary, but beware, we are very aware. Any treachery will be met with blades. T Takena turns and walks off to the north. Shanti turns to you. I see you are not a fool. Good. You can follow us right now to meet Zachary, or you can take some time to look around this town first and see what you can learn. Either way, come and catch up with us soon, so we can see what we can learn from Zachary. Her use of the word we pleases you. Oh good, we got in well with her. First though, let's improve our statistics a bit. Let's see here. Oh, we actually have healing craft. Huh, when did that happen? Eh, no matter. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're carrying a lot. We're not going to be able to carry as many of those as I'd like. One of those, one of those, and... I think we can leave it at that. Leadership and mechanics to six. No. Strength to five. Four, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let's improve strength a bit. I'd like to be able to carry things. We will follow them. You get your first good look at the settlement of Dry Peak. It's not as awful as you imagined. It's also not that great, either. The town consists of a handful of shops clustered along the single road. To the north, you can hear serviles working on Dry Peak's excuse for crops. Far to the northwest, you can just make out the entrance to the mine, which is the sole reason Dry Peak exists. Though the ground is mostly barren, there are a number of trees. This actually seems to be one of Dry Peak's main problems. They are some sort of special shaper-made desert tree, designed to grow quickly in extremely harsh conditions. However, these trees are growing too quickly. They're like weeds, thick, wiry, mostly useless, and desperate to destroy what few roads and structures the servile have managed to build. All in all, this place is dry, cramped, and unpleasant. We look forward to, making, to meeting with Zachary and Barzal and getting out. The comment of the trees is actually something that is pointed out briefly. I don't know how many more times it's pointed out, but it's something that I really like they sh that they mention and show. It is precisely the reason why the Shapers are so incredibly careful, not only with who gets what, but with what they do. One slight mistake, one slight miscalculation, and things go terrible. Make the trees grow just a little too quickly, and they overrun everything and choke the life out of everything else that tries to survive in here. It's like, say for example, that story I heard about a couple frogs ending up brought to Australia. 
You think? They're frogs. What are they gonna do? And it's Australia. The place is filled with dangerous creatures. The most poisonous pe creatures. I think it has the record for most poisonous creatures in a country. Here's the thing, though. None of them are natural predators. And because of that, the frogs overran the place. And last I heard, Australia has a huge frog problem. They're just nothing but pests. And people are actually encouraged to kill them. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. But if that's true, that's exactly the same thing here. You make a slight mistake, introduce something into the wrong area that's not prepared for it, and it just overruns and destroys the entire ecosystem. This is the exact reason why the shapers are so careful. And it shows. It's great to actually find a, a magical sect in some fantasy game that treats magic with the amount of care that it really deserves. I mean, compare that to all those other fantasy games out there, where you have a mage in his tower who summons a demon without taking the proper precautions, and suddenly it's destroying the entire countryside. I love this. I love the Shapers because of this. Don't get me wrong, though. The Shapers should not be held up on a pedestal. They do have flaws. And we will see that by the end of the game. But I promise you that. Zachary is this way. Dooby dooby doo. Come on, I'm following you. Ah! To the east, you can see the entry to a huge subterranean hall. You expected to find something like this. This will be the warren where the shaping of the life forms here took place and where the leaders of the settlement live and make decisions. If you want to find Zachary and Barzal, this is the most likely place to look. You are as likely to find answers here as ev as anywhere. We'll go there eventually, but first... We will go into the Dry Peak Warrens, but we'll do what uh, Shanti suggested and look around the village. There are a few patches of crops here, part of Dry Peak's pitiful attempt to be self-sufficient. These tired plants were the Shaper's best effort to create grain that can grow here. They just couldn't figure it out. There are several serviles working in the fields. Serviles are probably the greatest creation of the Shapers. Small, strong, slightly smart, endlessly obedient. They are your most important workers and servants. Sometimes, some Shapers worry that serviles are too intelligent, too independent to be trusted. Looking at the creatures here, are tireless, obedient, and happy, it's hard to believe that this could be true. Yep, those are serviles. You meet a servile, one of many you have met before. Serviles are the most loyal and useful of the Shaper servants, intelligent enough to work independently, but not smart enough to rebel. Serviles are about five feet tall and heavily built. They are designed to be very agile and muscular. This one looks up at you with a standard calm, blank gaze, and she says, Yes, Shaper, how can I serve? Its clothes are very dirty. It probably spends all of its time working in the fields. What are you doing now? I wait for commands, Shaper. I do what you want. How are you feeling? The servile has to think about the question for a minute. I am... Um, well. Well. How do you feel about having to work? I... I... The servile is very confused. They are not made to be very smart. Hmm. Well, serviles are meant to be nothing but... Well, servants. You are not made to think, you are made to do. Storage bays, no removal of supplies without Zachary's permission. Eh, probably going to be not ours, but hey. Take these bars of iron, and hey. Much like what you would expect, if they're marked not, ma not ours, and nobody sees us, we can just take them without worry. Yeah, I think we can leave that closed. We don't need to use the living tool. This post is here to discipline serviles who show disobedient tendencies. Oh my. Hmm. This is the entrance to Dry Peak's mine. With great effort, serviles bring iron ore and occasionally valuable and useful crystals out of the earth. There are no serviles going in and out, though, and the mine carts look like they haven't been used in several months. The mine is dark, and you think you can hear unpleasant hissing coming from within. It appears that the rogues you met outside Dry Peak have taken up residence elsewhere, too. 
You meet one of Drypeak's guards. You aren't surprised to see that he looks tired, dirty, and poorly equipped. He's not dumb, though. He knows enough to stand at attention when a Shaper approaches. How have things been going? We've been fighting rogues, and we'll keep fighting them until they are all dead. Or we are! Or both! Well, he's determined to do his job. What can you tell me about Zachary? He is our leader. He points, I stab. Eh, just to uncover that bit of mine. Okay. <clears throat> Look further around. Dry Peak Barracks. Eh, we'll go in there later. We'll explore around first. Dry Peak Farmland to the west. Beware of rogues, no serviles without a guard escort. Wow. There's rogues in there, too. It's worrying. How many rogues are there? These walls are the remains of an earlier attempt to expand the village of Dry Peak. The effort was abandoned the same time the settlement was. The twisted, weed-like trees have started to tear up the stone walls. Unless constant effort is spent cutting them back, there will soon be nothing left. Yes, beware the trees. Well, at least the trees aren't, I don't know, emanating some spores or something that causes people to kill themselves. Hmm. Oddly, there is a man skulking back here in the ruins. Seems like he is hiding, and yet he doesn't seem concerned that you have found him. He is skinny and filthy, and he shakes slightly. Ah, you. <coughs> you found me. Good. I'm Zaf. I thought you or your master would poke back here eventually. Why are you skulking back here? I am watching Dry Peak. I was sent to try to learn what is happening in this town. That is my job. I am eager to return, though. He d leans against the wall. He doesn't look fit to travel. Sent to learn what's happening here? You mean you're a spy? I suppose, if that's what you want to call it, Shaper. But are you not a spy as well? I guess he has a point, in a way. What were you sent here to find out? What our enemies were doing. Our enemies in Dry Peak. Bear this is in mind. This is why I let you find me. This is what I wanted to tell you. There are many forces in this place. Shanti has chosen her side. Her destiny is fixed. Yours is not. Do not choose sides too quickly. My faction has much to offer you. Wait and explore before you decide. Interesting. Say, you wouldn't know where I can find someone named Barzal? <laughs> I am familiar with the name. I suspect Barzal would very much like to meet you. Go northwest from Dry Peak. You'll find the passage which will send you in the right direction. Interesting. You look hungry. Would you like something to eat? You are kind. <coughs> some bread would be nice. Or some fruit. I'll bring him some. I mean, why not? I mean, sure, because he's a spy, but... Eh, I'm a nice guy. I'd be nice to people. If I find a bit of food, I'll bring it to him. Let's see. Oh, there's some food. Perfect. I'll bring it to him. Let's see, in here, I'll come back there in a minute. I'm not going to say what that was because, well, we'll find out later. Don't worry. Let's go give him that food. He's going to want it. He did seem hungry after all. Here, I have something for you. Zaf seizes the food and devours it. Thank you, Shaper. That was useful. It's not safe for you here. I think you should leave. Yes, Shaper, I have said what I had to say. Remember what I told you. Keep searching. There are great rewards for you here, greater than anything the Shapers offer. If you know where to look. Zaf walks off to the north quickly. In moments, he is gone. <laughs> 